to set number four from The Waiting of God, held in Indianapolis, Indiana, December 27 to 29, 1985. We continue with the Friday morning service and its conclusion, December 27th. So I have time uh, to welcome her, you know, in a service. We welcome her now in a general fashion. And all other persons, too, visiting us from other countries. And we appreciate that uh, kindness and this love and this fellowship. All right, uh, Brother John, would you like to share some announcements? Would you please? Well, we thank the Lord for his wonderful work to us and the, uh, the message of the Lord to our hearts this morning. It's a message of hope and encouragement of what God is doing and going to do. First of all, may we thank all those who participated in preparing this room and all of the other arrangements having to do with this series of meetings of Waiting Upon God. We thank you, each one. Yes. It, uh, when you begin to mention names, it, um, yes. it's, it's difficult because everyone really uh, ought to be mentioned because the one who did the least amount uh, we want to really want to say thank you, but we do want to particularly thank uh, Robert Allen yes. for uh, his efforts and his artistry in preparing yes. the Beautiful. the lovely setting yes. that uh, we're enjoying this morning. I'm grateful, and to every other one who worked. True. We want to thank uh, Mentone and Kokomo Fellowships for their Church of God hymnals. May we mention yes. that we need more Church of God hymnals. Yes. If you know where you can obtain some, where we can obtain some, we will be delighted to hear about it. Yes. Mark Faust and the Kokomo Christ Fellowship for the lovely poinsettias. Yes. White Harvest for their uh, the use again of their piano. Oh, yes. And uh, also for securing the parking area for us, for being responsible yes. for that uh, Reverend Paul Spasik has worked diligently yes. to uh, organize a security yes. guard to watch their parking area. We had three autos stolen the last time we were here. I believe it was the last time or next to last time. Last but time. we need uh, that help and they are working diligently to uh, well, secure you. that. We would ask you also to be very uh, cautious in your, all of your demeanor. I know that you have. I, you were commended highly to me uh, late last night by a very tired uh, staff, but you were commended for your graciousness, your understanding, Thank you, Jesus. your politeness, your uh, joy, sensitive, just many things they had to say that I thank the Lord for because uh, you, you'd come through uh, adverse circumstances, yes. weather, time, and you were tired, and there were situations, as there always are with, uh, with large groups, and yes. uh, the Lord helped you all wonderfully so in your demeanor. Let's remember that the ministry is in the little things so yes. often. Yes. It is in the quietness in the hallways. Yes. Let's remember, even though we're happy and we're delighted to be here, we should be happy and excited. We are. We do have hold, have the littlest end of the biggest thing on all the earth, but we need to remember when we're in public uh, where we are and uh, be careful and uh, in our praises and in our thanksgivings and our loving one another in standing in the hallways so that we don't block hallways, yes. going up and down the halls that we're not uh, right. that we're not loud and shutting the doors as carefully as we can, as cautiously as we can, being yes. quiet in our rooms. Yes. Because uh, even nice hotels have rather thin walls. And so we need to be careful and cautious. May I encourage you in one other area uh, that I can think of, and that is uh, please remember that we are not here to fellowship so much one with another as we True. are to worship God and wait upon God. True. Therefore, a rest should be at a premium. It should be primary upon your mind please. when we are not in services because we need to give our very best to be able to do our very best to be as alert as possible and respond as, uh, as clearly uh, as possible when we're in worship. So let me ask you to minimize fellowship 
together. Eat and do what you have to do and try to rest right. for a little while so that we can come back. Reverend Helm, that's all I can think of unless the staff and or you. Yes. You thought of so many wonderful things, John. That was a wonderful presentation. Appreciate that labor of love and the sharing. Man, praise the Lord. I'm so grateful that Jerry got this chair made for me, got it all fixed up. And it helps me so much to be up like this. And I thank you for getting this work done for me in Chicago. Thank you. This is so beautiful. As John said, it's so beautifully arranged. And we're thankful for it. And for these chairs, these comfortable chairs. Because some chairs it's very difficult to sit on. So we were grateful for your patience and for your comfort. Anything we've omitted that should be said? Yes, Richard. At 1.30. 1.30. Now, if there's someone that's without finance and you know about it, or you might slip a little note to one of our men and we'll pray about it and we'll just see what we can do, what can be done to share what we have. You know, years ago, the man twins, they came to the waiting point. God, I found out later, and they stayed in their car and ate cheese and crackers. They hadn't eaten cheese and crackers since. <laughs> They didn't tell. You see, they were so, they just, that's all they had. And I thought that was real precious. That's several years ago. Was that 12, 15 years ago? Yes. So any one of you that have need of something besides cheese and crackers, let us know. And food we want you to have or whatever you need. All right. Is every announcement made that should be made. Remember, we convene the Lord helping us, strengthening us at 1.30. I'm so glad I can stand up here. <laughs> it takes the Lord to do this, and we're grateful for it indeed. Anyone that's tried it has found out it's far more different than they ever dreamed. Uh, you, know, it's, you can have a program. That's easy. That's easy. But when the Lord is leading, that's altogether different when we follow his guidance. Amen. Any other thing on anyone's heart? Now, we know that there's a lot of things. Charles, is there something on your heart? Okay. Praise the Lord. All right, let us stand, please. We're going to be dismissed by prayer, and then the ushers will lead you row at a time as you wait upon the Lord and his guidance and his direction here to depart from this room. Okay, Virginia, we'll have you to have a little prayer. Would you bring the mic, microphone, David, please? And after uh, she prays a little prayer, we're going to have Daniel pray as we go. Thank you. Father, we're thankful for this precious time in this room. We felt your presence so strongly, Lord, for the help that we've received in our own hearts, Jesus. We pray that... Uh, some way, Lord, that each of us could obey thee, that you could have your way in this waiting on God. In thy name we pray. O Lord, again we praise and honor thy name and are grateful in our hearts to know by experience that in this very room there's quite enough love for all of us. We are thankful for Calvary thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanseth us from all sin, and thankful that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. We pray that as we rest, as we nourish, as we prepare our bodies, our hearts, and our minds for what is to come, that uh, we may look forward to this without expectation of anything except that you would do a work in our hearts that would make us meet for the Master's use. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And we know you love us. And oh, dear God, how that helps us to love one another. We pray that you would refresh and strengthen your servant. Give him encouragement and vitality that is beyond himself. 
as he leads and as we endeavor to press to hear and to follow. And it is in your name we pray it. Amen. Beginning the Friday afternoon session, December 27th, 1985. Praise the Lord.
few years ago, I wanted to have Brother David Kraft be encouraged. So I took our granddaughter and my wife and daughter down to his little home where he'd been 80-some years. And I took her down there for one reason, that was that he'd get a blessing. I thought she could give him some scripture and sit on his lap because here he'd been by himself most of his life except, of course, his mother had been with him. But she'd been dead several years. And not many children, you know, the children of Scott Depot loved him, all of them, I'm sure. And I've heard reports of it. Uh, but this was back some years ago when this occurred. So I, uh, I made special effort to do it because David was so dear. When I'd be with him and he'd pray, I never saw any man in my life could sit on a box and get his head as far down as he could. Uh, the way he could pray was something marvelous. And his head would go down. That's about, as, well, he could go on down. Oh, such humility. His humbleness, such sweetness. So I wanted him to have a blessing. So I took April Marie and my wife and April Marie's mother and maybe another one or two. And we went into the little home. You know, there weren't very many chairs. I think he sat on his box, maybe, I'm not sure. So I had my little granddaughter sit on his lap. She was about seven, like six or seven, and it seemed like her, her feet would almost touch the floor, because he's small. And she began to give him scriptures. Oh, I was so happy. Now she gave him, I don't know how many scriptures, she looked up and she said, Grandfather, May I sing Silent Night, Holy Night to him? It wasn't Christmas time. I said, oh, yes. She surprised me. I never thought about the child singing Silent Night, Holy Night. But she wanted to, and I said, well, certainly that'd be fine. You know, I didn't know she could sing it. So she starts singing Silent Night, Holy Night in the middle of the summer. And she just opened her mouth and began to sing Silent Night. And about that time, I got it. I laughed, I cried, I cried, I laughed, I laughed. I, I just carried on. Oh, oh, my mind, the power just, oh, I didn't know I was going to get such a blessing. I didn't know it, didn't realize it. I took my granddaughter down to bless him, and I'm the one that got the blessing. See, I got it. I received the blessing. Oh, he was blessed too. But, oh, I was doubly blessed or tripled or I don't know how many times. But it was so great, I never have gotten over it. I never have gotten over that. So when I hear Silent Night, of course, you see, I've been acquainted with that for over 60 years. And for a little child to want to sing it in the middle of the summer and be blessed like I was and like I am. Hallelujah. Oh, it's, it's rich, isn't it? We have such a wonderful Jesus, a Christ that can bless us in the middle of the summer by a Christmas song, anytime, anywhere. So I went down to bless someone else, and I received it myself. And I'm getting a little bit right now while I talk to you about that. And I'm, I'm thankful you're here. Of course, I wish I could have everybody up close, because the farther away you are, why, I can't see you so well. And I know you can't all be up in front. You want to. And we're just so grateful you're here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, are you in this thing 100%? Hmm? How many of you are really in this thing 100%? I mean, with all the might you've got, I've ever expected to have. I'll tell you, God is wanting men and women that will be in this 100%. Completely and entirely. And that's why God chooses that we be in this. You know, if you're in it 100%, I'll tell you, you're, you're really moving for God. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, when did you get started? Well, over half a century ago. <laughs> 
Hey, man, they said I wouldn't last two weeks in Parker City. They said you won't last two weeks. Well, I wouldn't have. Only through Jesus did I make it until now. But Jesus helped me. Jesus helped me. The Holy Spirit helped me. The blood, the precious blood, cleansing me, helping me, guiding me, directing me. So I'm thankful that Jesus cares. And he blesses us real good. So my wife just asked me if she could play Silent Night. And I just had to share that again. About how blessed I was. One little child was singing it. Now at Christmas time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Michael, Bowers, come up and sing it. You got the words there, honey? Sweet. Michael, come up and sing it as you play it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, strengthen his throat. Strengthen his throat. Amen. Well, we're just trusting here. And wonderfully gave me enough strength to get back here right quick. Oh, I want to thank Jesus for all answers to prayer. See, all answers to prayer. Those who have been fasting and praying, I want to be grateful for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank each one of you for praying and fasting, holding on to God for us. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. He's coming again. And we praise him. Amen. Now, this is all unrehearsed. But, uh, see, my wife enjoys Michael singing so very extremely much. She enjoys singing of you all. But uh, in some way, something happens to her when he sings. And we're thankful about that. Because she's a musician. Has been for 66 years. And when he sings, the Lord helping him to Jesus' glory stirs her heart. So I'm grateful about that. And you see, it's because of his mother. It's because of his mother telling me about going to a waiting upon God years ago. Two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. I don't know how long, God. Lanita, where are you? Is she here? Maybe she'll be here in a little while. But it was a few years ago, she's telling me, and that's when the Lord gave me the revelation of the waiting upon God. Hallelujah. Now, he helped us some marvelously this morning. That if God so chooses to help us like this this afternoon, he's already helping me. Yes. And I'm giving him praise and glory and honor that he would be so merciful to me like this. Praise the Lord. Man, I'll try to get stopped. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so- Sleep in heaven, we
the Lord. Thank you for singing that precious Christmas song. Thank you. I noticed when we were looking at the uh, list that the Holy Spirit had revealed to me this morning early, uh, a little past 5.30, that Ms. Helm was through all the numbers except two. And when I looked the very next number that she would have been playing if we could have had this, had time, was Come Holy Spirit. And that was one of the choir numbers. See, that was on the list that God revealed to me yesterday, or this morning early, Come Holy Spirit. So I thought that was appropriate and wonderful. So we'll have... Uh, John and Roger and John sing, Come Holy Spirit. I think she has it here. There's quite a number of seats over to my right, left. Uh, we will have this number, Come Holy Spirit. Always helps me when I see you have the fire in your soul. Yeah, I look back and see how much power the Holy Spirit working in your life helps me. I need it. I am weak, but He is strong. Hallelujah. We got an early start. I was down here early, so that's fine. fine. Thank you. And wonderful to have these precious sons. Oh, we got two more just like them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't that precious to have these helpers? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Try to praise the Lord for these precious ones. See, they're so dear. I used to want, I used to think back 45 years ago, I'd say, well, will it ever be that I'd ever be privileged to have someone help me? That was 45 years ago, 40 years ago, 35 years ago. Jesus, will it ever, could it be ever possible that I'd be privileged to have a precious one to be with me, to be with me? Of course, my brothers were with me and helped in meetings back 30 some years ago. But I mean just to be with us all the time. Richard Moore told me in 1966, he said, you need someone with you all the time, wherever you go. And that's what he told me. So he had the vision of it in 1966. And when the first one came, you would have thought he came to help Richard. Oh, he was so happy. You'd have thought it was his assistant. Really. I'm not just saying words. It's a fact. Then when the next son came, oh, he was so happy. 
he was trying to praise Jesus for it. Because he told me when he was with me, 65, 66, you need someone with you. And I was thankful because many times I would be in a place and have such a meeting, I wish that I, I desired to have you with me so that you could be in on the joy and the blessing that I was in on. Yeah. And it's been wonderful. And we've had great times all with you all. Remember how we'd go to the hospital one time we'd have over there and back in the city? Remember those days, how God had blessed us? Oh, he just helped us so well. So richly, see, he's helping us now. And just maybe just two of us together. And God would bless us. The Holy Spirit did that. I've never gone with you anywhere that God has blessed. I don't think there's ever the, the, the most minute or menial thing God has blessed in. Oh, my. We're in debt to Jesus for that. Even out to the barn. Yes. When you'd be out there with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we're in debt. Just think of it. Think what great Savior we have. <laughs> Our Savior at the right hand of God. He's, he's preparing a mansion for everyone that's walking with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus he said, where two or three are gathered together, in my name, that am I in the midst. So he's, he's right here with us and helping us, blessing us. I touch my heart on blessing us. Oh, I am so grateful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if your heart's just bubbling over and you can't stand it any longer, just get up and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. All right. Is there anything on you, men's heart? Okay, fine. Thank you. Come as a wisdom to children, come as new sight to the blind, come Lord as strength to my weakness, take me so body and mind come as a rest to the weary come as a balm for the soul come as a dew
say thank you Jesus praise the Lord Uh, just stay up here Lord willing stay up here David and James would you come up also grandson and son just John brother John James at the end. Roger over here. Son John. Over here, David. See, I don't know, but some way the Holy Spirit witnesses to me. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My co laborers. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? It seems to be so merciful. Amen. Oh, we're so grateful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise us. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. No, that's true, Ms. Alma. That's right. Well, I'm just praying here to see who's be in that chair. I don't know. Right over here somewhere. It's James Moore. One of our sons in the gospel. Now, see, he told me right here. As soon as I get to him, see, it operates. How you see, we're not just guessing at this. Oh! Yeah. Coming down State Road 1 when he was a young man, 14 years old, back home, I told his mother and father in the back seat of our car, I said, Jesus has just revealed to me that son James is called to the ministry. Oh, they... they I imagine they were a little, might have been surprised, or very much surprised. I said, but we can't tell him. I have to hold this to our heart for years. And I said, in time, God will work that out. This took place, this revelation took place in 1965. It was 20 years ago. He was 14 at the time, and he's 34 or 5 now. 34 years old now. And years went by, and one day, he said to his father and mother, nothing's working right. There's anything going good. I want to see the servant of the Lord today. So I'd been waiting all those years. And he came to the prayer room, and his father was with him, and we began to share, and told me about what was on his heart. And I said, yes, yes, I understand. I said, I know why things aren't working so well. Because the Lord has revealed to me when you were 14 years of age that you were called to the ministry. Now that's the last thing he wanted to do. He, he didn't want to preach. I think, wasn't it the last one on the list? Because you really didn't want to preach if you could get out of it. Now usually they're the ones that do the preaching. The ones that do not want to preach, trying to get out of it, if they can, is the ones that God's likely to put the power through them and give them the message. And so we just knelt down and we began to pray. And when he was saved, I said, oh, I have fellowship with you right now. Just clicked in my heart right then in our prayer room. Uh, A year or two ago, he had his young people with him from 
Dr. Roundtree's church, his church in Missouri. And we were in, I was chairing various things. That's just a prayer and guidance. He said, now right there, young people, it's where I found the Lord. That's where I was saved, right at that spot there in the prayer room. Oh, that helped me so good. It did. Oh, just think how indebted we are to Jesus, really, that God revealed it in 65 and came to pass years later and saved him. So thou art called to preach the unsearchable riches of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, it's, it's wonderful to know how God has worked and led. And isn't it remarkable that the Lord would tell me he was to be up here? Because Jesus revealed 20 years ago he was called to the ministry. You see, the Holy Spirit took me right over to him. I think this is making us exciting. Uh, oh, how wonderful it is. Praise the Lord, James. You may take this chair here, if you please. Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father. We bless thee, Jesus. We give thee glory. We honor thee. We praise thee. We know not how to pray as we ought, but we know, Lord, that you know how to help us. And so we come before thee this afternoon with adoration, thanksgiving, and praise, and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost for thee, Jesus, born of the Virgin Mary that came forth out of ivory palaces to this world of woe and darkness. And you came, Jesus, all the way from heaven down to the little humble stable. You came all the way to Bethlehem. And when you came, oh, the wise men that studied the scriptures knew that you were coming. They could see the sign in the sky. They could tell by the Holy Spirit that you were born. And they came from afar to see thee. We thank the Lord that they went back home another way. We're so grateful that thee was able to teach them how to listen to thy voice. How thee was to be spared. We give thee glory and honor and praise for the work of the Holy Spirit among us. Yes. And thank thee for the kingdom of God come and for the precious blood in it that saves from all sin. Though our sins be scotted, it can make them white as snow even though... Well, we thank you, Jesus, that you saved me, a cheaper Lord, sinners. Lord, you. Oh, you saved me. You oh, took away my Lord, sins. I was an awful Lord, sinner, Lord, terrible Lord, sinner, Lord, saved Lord, by Lord, grace through the blood of Jesus Christ. And he transformed us and brought us forth in the Lord, darkness Lord, to a marvelous Lord, light and gave us joy and peace and gladness and songs Lord, and glory and joy. Lord, Fifty-three years ago, Lord, next Lord, month, Lord, we're grateful, Lord, 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 that you saved us. I need thee every Lord, second. Lord, oh, how great thou art, mighty thou art, to save all these dear ones, because everyone here it's just so precious. Every one outside out there is discouraged back here. And trials and tests and struggles. Some are in a test. Lord, get right in and take care of this test. I don't know what it is. Some of them are in a test out there, right through there. Oh, God, help, we pray in all these situations. Oh, Lord, back here. Oh, Lord, we're trusting to deliver us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that Thou will go into the heart of each one that's disappointed or tested or tried and struggled, oh God, in disappointments. We pray to take these disappointments out of these hearts. Oh Father, that they will trust You and lift You in these, oh God, that have sin in their lives, that they'll be saved today, that they'll give their heart to Thee, that they'll repent. Amen. You said if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. Lord, you're able to save right now. Yes. Any heart will say, Jesus, oh, forgive God, me of my sin. Soul, save me now. He'll say, you'll say them right now. They'll say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. My secret sin of adultery, fornication, not doing your will, doing my own will. Yes. Forgive me of my sins and iniquities and unrighteousness. Save me, apply your precious blood. Because oh, yes. you'll write the name down in glory. In heaven where thou art with the Father. We praise thee, Jesus, for the victory. Drive back this darkness. Oh, God, this awful darkness. Oh, God, that souls, oh, Lord, will walk with thee and talk with thee and listen to thee and follow thee. We give thee the praise that you're able, Lord, if a person's faithful enough, is really obedient, then you can take that individual and sanctify them and cleanse them and make them a holy person sanctified meat for thy use yes. and then bring a people together to be one as the father jesus are one Glory. we know none of us are able but we know thee is able and we realize lord that you are saving any soul here that will repent just now and say lord save me jesus. and then there are many here that's been seeking to be sanctified for a long time wanting to be sanctified but takes the power of the holy spirit and if we haven't obeyed thee it delays that sanctification. If we have the slightest resentment, if we have some slight idea of what we want, it delays our sanctification. Right. 
So there's so many things that cut off and hold us back from the power and the glory and the presence and the power of thy indwelling. Because if we want anything, if we want something and that something within is not in line, then we delay what is ours. And uh, you're able, Jesus, today to cleanse the carnal nature, this old deceitfulness of heart, that we become a true, genuine, holy, submissive people to thee, rejoicing and doing thy good pleasure. Yes. Oh, we thank thee. Lord, pray for the widows and the orphans and the fatherless. Oh, I pray that you will, you will comfort the fatherless and the orphans now. Comfort them. Send comfort. Send comfort. That touches my heart a little bit on comfort the orphans, the fatherless. I believe those that do not have their father with them today and have been gone for a while, I believe Jesus could give you some comfort. If you've been missing them, God will send comfort to you. Comfort, comfort to them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you're able, oh God, to, to take out the pain and the suffering, the diseases, the cancers, and all these infections of the body and making whole and delivering and lifting us and giving us what is needed through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank the Heavenly Father for Jesus at the right hand of God, where he is with thee now praying for us. Oh, that we could become like thee each step of the way. We praise you, Jesus, for helping all of our missionaries in the mission fields far and near. We pray for each and every situation. Oh, God, over there, taking care. Oh, Jesus, and for what you're doing in the church, in the ministry. Lord, you're touching me on the ministry. I pray for the work of the Holy Spirit in the ministry because the ministry, unless we wait on thee, if we study and pray and don't let thee lead us and it's our program and we're just doing it the best we can, but you're trying to teach us to wait so you can uh, break down all the things within us that's preventing thee from leading us and to cleanse out of us those incentives, those desires, those things that build up in a life that prevent us from hearing thy voice to be led, to be guided, to be directed by the Holy Spirit. I pray to encourage every heart in the ministry, in the laity today. Thank you for the doing this to, the today, this morning, this afternoon. We give thee praise that you answer prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for the day you told me this son right here, that you'd call him three times in Boston, Massachusetts. You told me when you were going to call him, and he substantiated every one of the revelations by a letter along this and call back in 66, 67, Amen. 68. Thank you, Jesus, that you reached out and brought him in, a man that was ready to uh, burn churches nearly and take all the children and give them to uh, societies that are trained in certain cultures to train the children. And now he's been saved and walking with thee, changed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done, what you're doing, what you will do. Thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful things that he has done. Dear Father, and uh, Joseph Bishop told me the other day, he can remember hearing me pray in 1964 for Martha and Nancy's companions to reach out and bring them in. It's over 21, 21 years ago, he heard me pray, bring, bring them in, reach out and bring them in. He was startled, he said. He was kind of amazed because we asked God to reach out in a far country and bring them in. And that's where they both were. James and John were brought in. Praise the Lord. So we thank you, Jesus, all about it. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Our grandson, we prayed with him, his sister in our front room years ago to find thee as our Savior. And thank you, Jesus, that Roger and John were brought up in the church and given to thee by their mothers to serve thee and to thy will. Thank you, Jesus, for all these many blessings. And all these, O oh Lord, out here that uh, would just need a little extra help today. Would you grant that strength, that blessing, that help, that encouragement to each one in Jesus' name? We know if we die enough and walk obediently, then you have many marvelous things in store yeah. that we never dreamed of. I have not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it in the heart of man the things that thee hath prepared for them that love thee, because those that love thee are those that follow thee and do thy will. They're revealed to us by the Spirit. Yea, the Spirit searches the deep things of God. We praise thee, adore thee, glorify thee for the God. work of Christ's kingdom yeah. and of thy love, Jesus, where thou art with God now, praying for us, the weak, the neediest, the bottom servant of I. I praise thee, Jesus, for this time together. 
for this time of prayer. I praise thee for all these that prayed since we left here. All those that prayed in the night. All those that prayed early this morning. All those that have prayed this afternoon. All those that prayed tonight. All those that will pray and get a hold of God till the glory falls. Till the power of the kingdom descends. Oh, what a, what a great thing it is when men pray and women pray and thy spirit comes down in the soul and dwells within the body, the heart of a trusting servant. Oh, it's in there like a light. Oh, oh glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for the light of the world is Jesus. We praise thee, Jesus, for the light. Oh, blessed Jesus, holy one of Israel, I need thee. Hallelujah. Praise Thee for thy indwelling, for thy work of the Holy Spirit. We thank thee for all that you're doing and ever will do. Oh, we praise thee, Jesus, for the victory saving us, and sanctifying, cleansing, healing, helping, guiding, helping me. Oh, Lord, just thank what you've done for me. Jesus, you've done so much. I want to praise you. You've given us so much. You've given us so much. Oh, we are so grateful. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For souls we trust, for the church to be revived, for the church to become one, as God and Jesus are one. Take all these spiritual cancers out of the body that's preventing this. We know you will as soon as we allow thee and will yield to thee, thee will do it. In Jesus' holy name we get into praise. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you for soul victory. Amen. Amen. Get in, seated. Praise yeah. the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad. Touched oh, your heart. Oh, I hear you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Well, amen. I forgot my Bible was under me. Let's sit down. You know, you can get praying. You forget where you're at a little. You kind of get happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that good? Praise God. Mm. Well, we're thankful. All right, Mrs. Helm, there's another number now on your list there. The Lord willing. It's entitled, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the manual's vein. Yes. You know, many years ago, here in Indianapolis, it was very early in the morning. I can't remember what it reads like, but I think the meeting was around 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it was a pretty good-sized gathering. Mr. Moody was kind of restless. He was restless because there was no fire, no power, no glory. Everything was dry and dead. I don't know what all took place in that meeting. And they were just trusting that there'd be something take place that would light the candle, get the fire going. And back in the congregation was seated a very precious, quiet, meek warrior. And someone next to him said, sing, <laughs> sing. Glory. Took his elbow and said, sing. He said, me sing? What would I sing? They said, sing anything, sing a hymn. In the midst of a kind of a darkness, a gloom, a night, he arose and he began to sing. There is a fountain filled with blood, and the power began to fall. They said D.L. Moody, he came into a certain pose that usually he was always found in when I he sang, he would sing. Oh, God came in that meeting, I tell you, it wasn't gloomy then. It wasn't dark then. Because there was one in the spirit with the gift of music, and God set the place on fire. When it was out, uh, all right, he said, uh, uh, Mr. Moody went to Sankey and said, I've been looking for you for years. You're going with me. He said, oh, no, I work for the uh, state of Indiana. I, I'm not able to get loose here. I think it was the Commerce Department. Oh, he said, I've been looking for you. Oh, he said, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. I... Yes, he said, you must work for me. You're going to help be my helper. And was he a helper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. One time he was singing in Scotland Yards and the power would fall and convict men a half a mile away or a quarter of a mile. 
Oh my, they said, there was, when he was singing one time in the city of Chicago, he was singing an old hymn, and the power went away over there and hit a gentleman. It brought him to conviction. Conviction was upon him. Oh, it was great. One man told me, he said, I heard him sing. I would stand under his window and hear him sing Beulah Land. Oh, he said, just to hear him sing Beulah Land, it was great. Because he sang in the power of the Holy Spirit. He had the gift of music. And when he would sing, the power would fall. And it fell when he was singing, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that blood, lose all their guilty stains. Lose them all. Blotted out all these evils and make what he's promised. We might be pure in heart and walk in the light or cease in the light. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Oh, that's so precious, isn't it? There's a fountain filled with blood. He just arose and sang a cappella. Didn't have any instrument. He didn't need any. He had plenty inside. <laughs> he had the melody on the inside. Oh, how God did bless and lift and lead and direct. Oh, dear ones, are you on fire? Oh, for God, have you got the fire and the glory? Hmm? How much power and fire is on your soul? Praise be Jesus. Oh, I need more. I'm just a beginner. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Just think of it. The poor in spirit possess the kingdom. <laughs> I tell you, it's wonderful. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. <laughs> Thank it. Think of it. The poor in spirit possess the kingdom. Who are they? Oh, the little ones that say, I have so little of you. I don't have much at all. I've got so little of love and wisdom and knowledge and so little of the Holy Spirit. I'm so small. I'm so limited. I'm needy. I'm a pauper. I'm, I'm poor. He said, it belongs to you. It's yours. It's yours. Oh, <laughs> oh glory. Well, if we go home, it would be worth it all, wouldn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. That is, oh, isn't it precious? Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Oh. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. All this done, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit. Oh, my, isn't it wonderful? You just feel like you've been converted. Feel like you're just saved just a little bit ago. Feel like you're happy. Great joy. You know, my home church had to work hard to keep quiet for 59 years. An old Thornburg told me about 20 years ago, he said, you mean it's hard for you to say amen? I said, oh, amen comes out, but it's hard because my home church, uh, the devil would say, keep quiet. Don't talk too much. Don't get too loud here. You'll disturb the peace. You'll get things upset. He said, Lauren, I never dreamed it was hard on you to say amen. Praise the Lord. I never dreamed of it. I said, oh, no. I just have to battle the devil all the time, a lot of the time there. In my home church where I'd been for 59 years. But, you know, it's so wonderful how Jesus saved me there. And the old time saints, you know, helped me pray with me. <laughs> I'd get down at the altar uh, in 1928. I, the, the storm would come take the electricity away. Couldn't have it until they had the wires back. You know, you can't even light till you get the wires right. You gotta have plenty of power. And the dynamo stops that, the, the light's out. So I brought an old lamp over there. And Daddy Boots and Mother Deal and I, <laughs> I was 12 years old. Oh, we had a prayer meeting. I see it now. In the lamp, and there we were around the little Walter where I was converted. One of them's down to Thomas's church now. Terrence, you know, they gave the board directors, uh, the trustees gave the Alzolers to my brother. And he has them, and so he took one to Florida so their altar could be at the schoolhouse auditorium. And we were down at that same old bench. For that light, 1928, and the three of us was having prayer meeting. Glory. <laughs> Glory. Oh, it was a scene, wasn't it? 
Why, we were so happy. Oh my, my, what a time. Isn't it wonderful to see how Jesus cares for you? And all the saints of the church, those that walk with God, a handful or more or less. Praise you, Jesus. Well, we'll get to the hymn a little bit, we trust. <laughs> We're talking about the blood purging, cleansing, saving us. That makes us happy. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I just thank him. I praise the Lord for victory. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're, he's revived us. <laughs> Amen. I'm thankful. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Jesus. Why oh, he said he beat us a well of water springing up in everlasting life. <laughs> glory. <laughs> said, I will be in you a well of water springing up in everlasting life. Give us such love for everybody in all the world. Isn't it great? <laughs> It is joy and peace when the Holy Spirit works like this. Praise his name forever. Oh, I don't know what to tell you. Jesus is right here with us. Oh, woo! Oh, God, glory to God. Amen. Oh, I said, Jesus, you could just come in here. I'd cry in the night, you know, and the days gone by. I said, oh, Jesus, you know, I'm the little servant you have. And I get in that room, I'm so small. If you could just come and help us, I'd be so thankful. He told me to come and of course, he gave me great assurance, and I can't praise him enough for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. There's a fountain and it's filled with blood. It's drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood. They just lose all their sins, all their guilty stains. They just all transform, change completely, brought from darkness to marvelous light. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, Jesus, do you want us all to sing it? Do you want one to sing it? Or no one to sing it? Well, you will play it. You will play it now, and we'll trust about the singing. Oh, yes, we will think of the words. It's probably in the hymn book. There's a fountain filled with blood. The, the black one's 140. 116 in the red, 140 in the black. Oh, we've had a great time. We've had a wonderful time here.
Thank you. Praise the Lord. There's a fountain that's filled with blood, drawn from a man of vain. Sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilt is stained. Praise God, in whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's turn to that hymn now and we'll sing it. 116 and one and 140 and the other. We'll stand if you please. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thomas, come up and lead it if you please. Thomas Mullins from Palm Beach Garden Christ Fellowship down in the Southern Florida. Praise the Lord. The Lord helped me to be with him for 28 Sundays this year. Yes. Hallelujah. 28 Sundays. <laughs> 92 miles is some chance of trip. Been the Lord helped us. It was such a precious time, wasn't it? Oh, it's been glorious. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise oh, I, a week privilege. ago, a week ago Sunday, I was just took my Bible and sat down and began to go there in Isaiah. Oh. Unto us a son is born. born. To us a child is given. Yes. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Yes. And Jesus helped me. Oh, marvelous. He helped me. Marvelous. And when I got through, uh, Thomas came up out of the chair quickly. Yeah. <laughs> with energy, yeah. with thanksgiving, with praise, with joy, enthusiasm. Yeah. He said, I've been in the church about 40 years. And he says, I think this sermon could be yes. one of the best or the best I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. The greatest he had ever heard. Yeah. And I said, oh, Jesus, oh, we were indebted to thee Praise because of thy love and thy yeah. grace and thy power and thy yeah. presence. Praise God. How you helped and lifted us oh, into God. high places. Yeah. Glory. <laughs> oh, unto God be the praise and the glory. <laughs> Jesus, our Savior. Oh, how wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. You may want to testify and give Jesus praise for saving you or oh, whatever's on your heart. I am thankful for Go Jesus ahead. saving my soul. Amen. I am thankful for the past 1985, which has been the most exciting year of my life. <laughs> and I tell you, for 28 Sundays, we've needed oxygen masks because God has taken us oh, in the spirit through his servant no, 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 no. to we're heights dead, that I never knew was up there. I didn't dead. know that we could get up there, but we God's been helping me marvelously. Father. And I want to praise him and glorify him for the privilege of being here with each of you yes. and with God's servant. Oh, we're Hallelujah. So oh, it's a joy to have you here. <laughs> glory. Praise God. God. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> See the smile on his face, hear the joy in his heart, glory. the glory on his soul. Praise, praise God. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise oh, Lord. what a time. You'd say, what can we do for you? What can we do for you? What else can we do for you? Just like some of you. What else can we do for you? <laughs> I said, oh, Jesus, it's so wonderful to have fellowship like this. Yes. The fellowship of Jesus' children. Yes. It's like that above. Praise God. Oh, praise his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise Lord. God. We're grateful. Oh, I'm thankful. Oh, and it's a wonderful story of love. Praise Amen. The Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's sing out. I don't know about you, but I'm just thankful that we have the opportunity to sing this glorious song together today. Praise the Lord. There is a fountain. Second stanza, yeah, please. <clears throat> the dying king rejoices to see that mountain in his grave, and there may I go while as he was all my sins away, wash all my sins. Oh, my 
operated with me. There have I, though vile as he, washed all my sins away. Washed all my sins away. And there have I, though vile as he, washed all my sins away. Oh, that was in my heart with power. Oh, he can sing the vilest of sinners. He can save them today. Hidden deceitful sins, iniquities, unrighteousness in the deep of their life. He's able to save us and give us the fire, the victory, the joy of today. Praise his wonderful name. Amen. Thou dying lamb, thy precious blood. Thank you. Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood shall Since by faith I saw the stream, Jesus. thy flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. It's a great stanza. Thank you. Praise God. Four stanzas. Ever since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply. Stands if you please. Put the amen on, if you please. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Went those tears precious flowing down his face. Want those tears praises flowing down Thomas's face? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, it's a wonderful story of love, isn't it? Isn't that great? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, wait you me. Yes, is there? Oh, yes. In the blood. Let's sing it. 
stanza of that. Can we sing a stanza of that? Is that in this book? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's the, I've been singing that for about 60 years. And oh, it's such a great song. Are you washed in the blood? Oh, it touched my heart. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, my. Sir. Operate on my soul. Yeah. One Glory. Four, 114. 114 in the red book. 114 in the red book. Thank you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? That's where it touched me a while ago. Oh, that's where it was. The Holy Ghost was on there. Are your garments spotless? That's what He wants. That's it. Without spot and without wrinkle. That's a marvel because He was talking to me about that scripture in the last three hour, two or three hours. How wonderful it is. Oh, isn't it wonderful to have been to Jesus and washed in the precious blood? Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> isn't it great? <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right, let us sing, please, the Lord willing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? That touches my heart now. Oh, I tell you, we're in a worship service. We're in a worship service. Isn't it wonderful when the Holy Spirit touches your heart? Oh, how wonderful it is, how marvelous it is. Oh, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, and be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. All right, we'll sing the Lord willing. Thank you. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in this place? This hour are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you You've been to Jesus and you're washed in the blood, you really have something to rejoice about. You really do in your heart. There rings a melody when yes. the, He's washed us and He lives in our heart. Yes, and we love everybody in all the world. Praise God. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you following Him every second, every step, all the way my Savior leads me? Are you walking, following Jesus all the time? God, Jesus did God's will always. And he wants me to do God's will always, not my own will. So this is a wonderful, wonderful privilege, you know. Are you walking daily? Thank you. Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are you harmless, spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Now, when you're walking daily by the Savior's side and Jesus comes, oh, what a meeting. Oh, what a celebration. When the bridegroom cometh, Will your robes be white? Well, if you walk in light as he's in the light, you obey him. Oh, what a meeting. Oh, what a great celebration. Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright? We'll be as we walk and we follow him step by step. I trust you won't let anything here get your attention. You won't let anything outside or, or this or that try to keep you from the meeting. There'll be a lot of things try to get you here and get you there. Just... Let Jesus have his way and not let the things of this world get in there. That's hold steady. That's, by God's grace, let's let him lead us. 
so that when he comes, he'll find us watching, faithful. See, and I have to die out to do it constantly. It's a battle. It's a warfare. And the warfare has gotten greater and greater since I walked with him 45 years. Gotten greater every year, it seemed to me like. And from 50, it was, I can't tell you. And from 50 on, it's been more. I had the saints tell me that long ago when I was in my 20s, and I'm learning it. Listen, if you walk with God, your battle gets greater and greater and greater. And we need to know that so you don't grow weary or get discouraged. Because the powers of the air battle, but Jesus wins every one of them. He never has lost any. All we need to do is just follow him. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Oh, we don't want anything by God's grace to do with sin. Or be attracted to this woman. I want to put our wife away and marry another. Or to want this part of the world. No, that'll grieve God. Or to try to get something over here because we want it. No, that'll grieve God. Because he wants us to be spotless. He wants us to be without these evils that so easily beset man. And we're all tempted. Uh, the enemy. And we must overcome. And it's through the blood of Jesus. Uh, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we have the victory through the blood of the Lamb. Isn't this precious? Amen. When the bridegroom cometh, will he robes be white? Let's sing that stanza. That's such a wonderful stanza. Thank you. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for those mansions bright? Are you washed in the blood? Aside the garments that are stained with sin. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood. Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood that washes us and make us clean. We're so unworthy. We're nothing. We owe it all to thee, every one of us, for the precious blood that will never lose its power. Amen. It will never lose its power. It will never lose. So precious. That's another one about the blood. 